Hi everyone and welcome in this new video. If you have one video to look today, it's really this one. Why? Today we'll trade a trading bot using Python, which is something really classic on YouTube. But we'll add two very important specificities. We'll talk about two problems, very important problems that are not about in any YouTube videos. First of all, we'll explain why and how the returns can vary depending on the data sources that you use. If you use Yahoo Finance, if you use MetaTurno5, if you use Interactive Broker, you will not have the same returns. And we will see why it's so important and how to deal with that. And last but not least, we will explain why reliability of the backtest is so important to avoid to have another fitting problem, which means in two worlds, lose money in live trading. So I advise you to stay until the end of this video to avoid making the errors of the other traders. This video is quite similar to the video how to create your own trading bot using Python, but we'll go a bit deeper into statistical significance. So that's why we'll be a little bit faster than in the previous video when we will trade the trading bot. We'll focus on the statistical significance and the two problem I spoke about in the introduction. So, first of all, we need to install some libraries and import them. So, the only library we need to install on Google Colab is Y Finance to import data from Yahoo Finance. Then we import some libraries, NumPy, Pandas, Yahoo Finance, etc. And this cell is only to custom our Matplotlib graph to have a dark theme. So first, let's import some data using Yahoo Finance. It's very easy to do it because with one line of code, we can import the data of the asset that we want. And we just have to put the ticker, the symbol. And to find it, you need to go on Yahoo Finance. You take the asset that you want the data and you take this symbol just there. You put it into a string. And when you will run this cell, you will have the data of this asset, which is quite interesting and quite easy also. So. But the problem is that here, for example, you have open, high, low, close, adjusted close, volume, etc. But maybe if you import the data from another source, you will have open, high, low, close, volume, and all in capital letter. So if you create a function that call open without any capital letter, you will have a problem because it will not be written with the same syntax. That's why you need to have the same format for all your data. You will see later when you will have several trading strategies, several process, etc., that it will make your life much easier. And that's why I have created the preprocessing Yahoo Finance data function. This function will take this type of data frame, okay, and will transform it into this type of data frame. So open, I log, close, and volume without any capital letters. And it's very important. Then we need to create our trading signals. As we talked about trading strategies factory, I think that it's a good moment to talk about the AlphaQuant program. The AlphaQuant program is a program that you can find on my website, and the link is in description, that explain the method that I daily use to create my trading strategies. And you have also an inner link part, you will have templates, a private community, a support, but I will don't go into the detail in this video. If you are interested by the AlphaCon program, just take a look to the link in the description. So for this trading strategy, we'll use a breakout trading strategy. You will see that it's a very simple trading strategy, but it works quite well and it's enough to explain what I want to explain there. The purpose of this video is not really to create the trading strategy, but to explain a lot of things related to trading strategies. Because I have seen that on YouTube, all the people out there creating trading strategies, showing you technical indicator, price action, but they never talk about reliability of the backtest, the problems that the real clients are facing. So for this trading strategy, we will use a breakout trading strategy. We will create two new indicators, the breakout high and the breakout low. The breakout high value is the maximum of the three last highest price. So here we extract a rolling with the three last highest price, okay? And we take the maximum. Once we have that, we need to shift by one. It means that 
instead of taking the price of today yesterday and the day before yesterday at the price of yesterday so we'll take the price of yesterday the day before yesterday and the day before the day before yesterday okay why we do that just because we will create a condition and if the close price is above or below the breakout's eye we'll enter in position but obviously we cannot have the close price higher than the high price of today okay it's quite obvious that's why we need to put a shift one and now we just do a copy paste and we do the same thing but with the lowest price and we use the min function and once we plot that we'll have our graph with the different support and resistance okay our breakout threshold and here as we can see we have sometimes the close price above the high breakout and below the low breakout but if i put shift equals zero the price is always between these two threshold and it's quite obvious it's the definition and now we need to create our conditions when we need to take a buy position when we need to take a sell position here as we walk on the euro usd which is generally stationary okay will use a reversal trading strategy. It means that for the buy position, we will take one only when the close price falls below the low breakout, just there, for example, okay? And for the sell condition, it's exactly the opposite. When we cross up the high breakout, we take a sell position. And generally, we do that because the Euro USD is stationary, but if we use this trading strategy on the Bitcoin, for example, we should, I think, use the opposite condition. But we'll take a look about that at the end of this video. So we have our condition. If buy condition is verified, we take a buy position. If sell condition is verified, we take a sell position. We run that. And I just created a small code just there, okay, to show you when we open a buy trade, and when we open a sell trade and as exit signal we use the entry in the opposite way it means that if i open a sell position there okay i will close it there when i will open a buy position if i open my buy position there and here i need to open a buy position again i will just do nothing and keep my buy position okay so i will keep it open there keep it open there and here I will close my buying position and open a sell position and I will continue like that until the end of the backtest. And to have so the position to know each day which position I have, I will use the signal column and I will just apply the fill NA method. It means that instead of having, for example, something like this, I will have something like this. So in other words, I will replace all the known value by the previous non-non value that we have. So that's the way I use to create my position. Then we have the cost, okay? We'll say that the cost to be in position each day is this. So 0.01%. And to compute the cost, we just use the absolute value of the signal. So it means that if it's one, we have one. If it's minus one, we have one also. But if it's zero, we keep zero and we multiply it by the cost. Then we need to create the percentage of variation of this asset to be able to compute in the next line the return of our trading strategy. And to compute the return of our trading strategy, we'll use the percentage of today times the position of yesterday minus the cost and we multiply that by 100 to have it in percentage but the question here is why should we take the position of yesterday and the answer is very simple to understand the percentage of today is computed using the close price of yesterday and the close price of today okay it means that we have all the information that we need okay at the close time of today but the position of today is also given at the close price of today. So we can't use the variation from yesterday to today at 7 p.m. for example, times 
the position that we compute at 7 p.m. also, because it means that we'll have futures information, which we can't have in the reality. That's why we had a position. We take the variation from yesterday to today using the position of yesterday at 7 p.m. It means I said, okay, at 7 p.m. yesterday, I want to enter into a buy position. And so to understand the returns of this position, I will take my decision that I did yesterday times the variation of today from yesterday cross price to today cross price. And here we can see a return. We do not have a complete backtest, but if you want to have templates that allow you to create backtest of your trading strategy very easily, you should take a look of my website and the link is in description. But the purpose of this video is not to create a complete backtest, so we can go forward. Here, we will automate the process of this trading strategy. So all this code is just the code that we have above. And when I import a data frame and I put it in the breakout trading strategy, I will have the returns of this trading strategy. So it means that I can use another asset if I want, and I will have the returns of this strategy applied to this asset. But as I said, for the Bitcoin, we should do the opposite. So let me check if I just inverse. So the sell position and the buying position to see if we have something interesting. And as we can see, we have something very interesting. And it's quite obvious because the Bitcoin is a trending asset, okay? An upward trending asset. But the Euro USD is a stationary asset. So I will put the right condition there. I will keep my Euro USD. And now we'll talk about something very important. We'll use the same asset on the same time frame, but we'll use data from a different broker. So here it's four hour time frame. So I need to use the resample function of pandas to create my daily data. When I have my daily data and I run this, I see that the returns are very different, even if we see that the price is not so different. So the question is why we do not have the same returns when we use the Yahoo Finance data and the data from a broker. The answer is very simple. Here, I shown you these results for decentralized assets. It means that each broker can give the price that he wants for this asset, which is not possible on the stocks, for example, which is a centralized market. But all of that to say what? To say that when you are creating a trading strategy, be sure that you are using the data from your broker. Because as you can see, we are using the same date, we are using the same asset with the same time frame, and because we use different brokers, we have different returns on our trading strategy. Here, I wanted to use Yahoo Finance and a broker because the difference is huge, okay? That's why I wanted to use that. But if you use the data from a broker and from different broker, the spread will be very small compared to that. And now let's talk very quickly about our last point, which is the reliability of our backtest. When we do a backtest on a trading strategy, is not enough. We need to quantify if we can trust our backtest or not. To do that, we can use a lot of methods. Personally, I use the CPCV, a method that comes from the research of Marco Lopez de Prado, which is an icon of the machine learning applied to trading. And I detail this method without all the fancy mathematical equation in my AlphaCon program. And I will give you also a template that will allow you to apply this robustness test to your own trading strategies. And if you follow me on LinkedIn, you have seen in many of my posts that the robustness test are the most important thing in any backtest process. So I hope you like this video. Don't hesitate to like and subscribe. And if you have any idea about a specific subject that you think it's important and you want that I abort in one of my videos, just tell me in the comments.